to be in a room with so many queer and trans people hanging out, laughing, celebrating community, being together. It's, it's really, it's a really beautiful thing. I actually started with peaches today because oh, I was cool. just like, you know what? This, this is the time. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. So, Page Boy isn't chronological, it's a collection of moments. You cover a range of feelings and topics, including anxiety, abuse, gender dysphoria, but also trans joy and some very liberating sex. How did you decide what to include? That's a really good question. <laughs> uh, I mean, in many ways, like at first, when I first sat down to start writing, it really was like something would come and words were just pouring out of me. So at, uh, at the beginning, it really was grabbing what was ever popping up and like letting that flow. And then as you know, I sort of wrote a proposal, then the book deal happened, then I was like, oh shit, now I have to write a whole book, you know? And that's when it did become more about um, about, you know, sort of choosing a, a time period and then focusing like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna focus on this friendship, what this friendship represented and build these themes around this or then this relationship or this incident. It's not an easy time to be trans. You wrote about how much vitriol you faced when you came out publicly as trans in 2021. What made you want to write a book now? Like, first of all, it just would have been impossible before the actual act of writing a book. I'm sure many people can relate to being so uncomfortable. You can't focus. You can't have space in your brain to, to do all kinds of things you want to do or pursue. Um, so for the first time, something like this actually did feel like it could potentially be a reality. <laughs> um, and then in regards to this time, this period we're finding ourselves in. It, it felt like just having the platform that I do have, having you know, the privilege of the reach that I have, that grasping the opportunity to share my story now, potentially that could allow someone to feel less alone or seen. I mean, I just, I know how much people sharing their stories have helped me. Did you fear any backlash? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, I did, yeah, but, uh, you know, I think that comes with even just posting a photo on Instagram, so it's kind of like, you know, um, um, but yeah, definitely when I was writing about it, that's something I was anxious about, or I'd be writing something and think, yeah, I know what they'll do with this or something, you know, but I wasn't going to not share something for that reason or not ex exist as myself for that reason. So, um, you know, it's par for the course, unfortunately, right now. Referring to a queer person named Jessica from your hometown in Halifax, you wrote, her visibility meant the world to me. And sometimes I think about that when I'm out in the world. So how do you feel being a possibility model for younger trans folks? I feel grateful to finally be in the position in my life where I've had the privilege and resources where I can be that. Um, I obviously visibility is complicated, you know, it's, it's important and it's crucial and also comes with backlash and needless to say, the most marginalized and vulnerable members of the community deal with the consequences the most and, um, but I hope that in being myself, existing as myself, it, it can offer a, a reflection of some kind of, of feeling less alone and, and that I can use my privilege and platform to, to help shift things in the way that I can. You're currently on your book tour, which is packed with a stunning lineup of moderators and guests. It feels like the tour is on your terms and really a celebration of queerness and transness. How is it feeling being in those spaces? It's feeling really, I have to say, quite beautiful. And I, that's because of these great audiences that are coming to hang out with us, you know? Uh, and 
think particularly in this time that you know we're all feeling is scary and intense to be in a room with so many queer and trans people hanging out, laughing, celebrating community, being together. It's, it's really, it's a really beautiful thing. This book is written for a broad audience. It's certainly being consumed by one. So what do you hope cis and straight folks take away from Page Boy? If it allows someone to learn a bit more about our experience or have felt like they couldn't wrap their head around the experience of gender dysphoria or what that might mean or feel like if if it illustrates any of that or, or highlights uh, a lot of the BS we have to deal with, um, then that is wonderful, you know. I, I wish something like that wasn't necessarily needed to gain support and empathy, but it, that it is what happens sometimes and that's good. Um, and in many ways too, I hope it shows, I'd love to think that, you know, cis heterosexual people have, you know, so many similar experiences in terms of emotional arc of what it means to step into yourself, what it means to have trauma manifest in your life and to work through that and, um, to love yourself, you know, I think we have far more in common than we do that's different. And I, you know, I hope we can all only like relate in terms of that being human is, it's a ride and uh, we're all in it together, you know. When you were 16 years old, you went to a Peaches concert and described it as the queerest thing you had ever experienced until that point. What have been some queer or trans highlights since? I guess the biggest hi highlight now is the, is the community that I have, you know, and my trans and queer friends that have made my life and this life I have now possible and are the reason I get through the moments that are overwhelming, the days that things do feel like too much and I need my pals and um, so, trans karaoke night, like, living for that. 